This video is brought to you by Gamer Subs. If you'd like to support my channel and get 10% off this delicious energy formula, use the code THORIN, T-H-O-R-I-N, at gamersubs.gg. I'm drinking the cherry lime circle one today. In light of the terrible phase result yesterday, losing to the plucky minnows of Saw, which, by the way, they even still almost won that series, playing collectively like you know what, with the exception of Rops. Although, to be fair, Saw also could have 2 0 There is that aspect too. There was that line earlier in the tournament. I thought, well, think about better days and something interesting about Carrigan. There was a line early in the tournament when they got out of the group stage, when they beat Team Liquid, where Carrigan said that, like, basically, he'd taken over in that overtime game, the one that was on uh, Mirage, and he'd microed the players instead of just letting them play their own style and sort of told them where to go and what to do. And that's how they'd done the comeback. And that's what they were going to do from now on uh, until the team sort of righted itself. And he pointed out this is basically what he does when he has a stand-in. That's why he's had so much success with stand-ins in the past. But one of the things that made me realise, also Rain said something similar, like, this is the way they're going to play from here on out. I previously did a video about Carrigan with stand-ins, but that was when they won tournaments. That was when they had outrageous success. There's the most famous examples. There's actually one I don't think I included in that video because it's one where they didn't make the final. But if you actually look in context, it's also insane. It's basically the first instance of this happening. And it was back in 2015. It was at a tournament called ESL Pro League Winter 2014 slash 2015, which was the last of those ESL Pro Leagues. It was like, um, you can imagine a Pro League, but it wasn't as big as the ones you're thinking of now because what they did is they did a merger when uh, ESL's parent company or whatever bought um, ESEA and then they merged it. It's actually the first one of those ones, if you remember, it was called the ESL ESEA Pro League or whatever because he took ESEA League, which used to have those lands in America, and he took the European Pro League. And then... It was the one where when they merged it, if you remember, that was where Cloud9 started their summer run and made it all the way to the final and pushed Fnatic, but lost. And Fnatic won in epic fashion. And actually, Shroud had like probably the best series of his entire career. was probably the MVP of the tournament. So that was the one, if you remember back then. Now, the key thing is, if we go and actually look at this tournament, you'll see how insane this is. Because look up here. So you can see this was in... Um, April, you can't see it on the side of the screen, but you can see the overall screen. This was in April of um, 2015. It started on the 10th. It ended on the 12th. It was a little three-day event. There was eight teams there. It was 15,000 for first place. Back then, remember, we didn't have many 250k tournaments. 48k is not even terrible back then. That's just like a normal size event. You had some very good teams here. You had Envious. Remember, they were the reigning major champions at this point. Oh, no, they actually, they, this is after Fnatic had won. They were one of the best teams in the world. They were placing like top four, a bazillion events in a row. You had Na'Vi, who this year started to get better and better and better and went from just being dark horses, obviously with Guardians, when Flamey started to pop off and Starrix could coach them and just talk a whole bunch of the time. You had TSM here. You had Titan, who this is when Kenny S was in his prime. This is prime Kenny S with the existence lineup, and obviously they could get by on a lot of existence calling. You had VP, who was still one of the best teams in the world, would still make it deep in all the majors. You had Dignitas, who actually was pretty good at the time. They were like a dark horse team. They were a playoff team. You had Pimp and Kirby and AZ and Nico as the all It's actually a pretty solid lineup. You had Copenhagen Wolves, which was just a Honda lineup, which was all right. Funnily enough, now it's just like a million fucking IGLs, but they weren't all IGLs back then. And then you had Natu and basically the best finished players because this is in the era before ends. And this is when Alu is over in NIP. Now, the key thing here is you shouldn't even actually have any impact on this tournament. Literally all these teams, except maybe Copenhagen Wolves, should be able to beat you. But... That's because you don't have the real lineup. TSM itself, by the way, on paper is like the best or second best along with Envious in theory at this point in time. But you look here, wait a minute, where's Device? Device, the best player of TSM isn't there. You have Cadian instead. Just because they needed an AWP and they brought in Cadian. Device couldn't attend this event. Then you go look at the group they're in. They're in the hardest group. This is the group of death. And if you're with a stand-in, without your star AWP, and then you know you didn't always AWP back then, your star player, you shouldn't win this group, right? In theory, VP should smash the group. They're the best team here. Then you have Na'Vi's dangerous. And then even Dignitas can get you on certain maps. And you go look here, they top the group and 2-0 it. And there's all best of threes. They play against TS, the Virtus Pro. Now, yes, it's close, but they win 2-1. to one. And by the way, I'll show you quickly. Gideon isn't even fucking doing anything. It's not even because of Cadian. Then you go here. They beat Dignitas in the winner match because Dignitas upset Na'Vi, even though Na'Vi ends up winning this tournament. You'll see again. 
Kadian's not really doing that much. Carrigan himself top frags with a plus 20 on this one. Because remember, he would AWP on certain maps like Mirage, plus 17, 32 kill game. You didn't know about that, did you? And then you might think, right, well, okay, you've already done enough. You made it out of the group stage. I can't expect any more. By the way, Titan at the time, like I say, had Kenny S for fuck's sake as their opera. You've got Cadian and a bit of Carrigan and some KGB depending on the maps. In the semis, you play against Titan. Right, yes, you could also have lost this, but you almost won it 2-1. It's two rounds on the last map. And when you go to here, it's still not really about Cadian. It's not about Cadian. By the way, Maniac actually had the like, series of his life in that one. Shout out, ye old Maniac. He wasn't always bad. In fact, this is the era when he started to get his game back together. When at, in the coming months, Kenny has fell off a bit. Actually, Maniac got a lot better, believe it or not. So what an insane accomplishment that is. Except here's the thing. In Carrigan's career, that's just a footnote. It's not even a big deal, is it? He's done loads of stuff way better than that. So I actually think people need to acknowledge he just has some kind of special talent for that style of eye jelly. He just chooses not to do it. Like, what's funny is, he was actually even more micro-ish sometimes in this TSM squad. And sometimes on CT, they wouldn't even play very gambly. They would just play straight up CS and just beat you by having better players and better team play. So the funny thing to me is, yes, he has also led some of the absolute best, his main style, looser style teams with star players and letting the stars frag out and then just bringing them in when you need to and filling in the gaps of what they need on the T side and doing the sick mid-round call. But what's crazy is his ability to do both, I think is unparalleled in CS history. You have the amazing micro guys like him and Alexi B and then they're good when they're doing it elsewhere. I think Alexi B's brought some of that back to the game, quite frankly. Then you have people like Glaive where they're amazing at the set style with some mid-round. This guy's the only one ever, who in theory could have won tournaments and maybe everything with both styles. That's why, if you want to make the case he's the GOAT, you don't actually go off titles and resume. You go off what he did with the pieces he had and how he called the games. Anyway, if you enjoyed this thought of the day and you want to support my channel and get 10% off some delicious gamer subs, use the code THORAN, T-H-O-R-A-N, at gamersubs.gg. Hello, my name is Anders, and I was just talking to my team, trying to get them rallied, we're making maybe 100000 a day in affiliate marketing, passive income, leveraged through AI and crypto. And uh, you can too, um, if you just follow my advice. And the number one secret I was just telling everyone about here really is that I watch Thorin's YouTube channel. You should too. Everyone needs a support network. And mine is, of course, my Patreon community the Squirrel Minority, who in many ways, they're the sunny to my share, saying, I got you, babe. So this video and all the others on my channel were kindly supported by the following names. Ahmed Haju, Matt Pugnaccio Rakula, Adam Tomlin, Animosity, Jensen Go, Tosh, Toucan, and you know it. Jerky's Minion, my main man, always going to be referenced, one of the best patrons of all time. Would you like to ask a question in my AMA? Maybe you want to suggest a topic or a guest to see on my channel. Do you want teasers to find out who the upcoming reflections and talk to Thor interviews are? Maybe you want to do one of those long discussions where you get to set the topics we talk about. Well, if any of these or others appeal to you, put your money where your mouth is. Join the Skaluminati today via the Patreon link in the description box below.